Sorry. That they cashed in on the, on, on the, the, the lines they were given, the GM5 margins. <coughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, if you give good players a second chance, they, there's a good chance they'll, they'll hurt you. And, um, and we bowled fantastically well at the start to take early wickets and give ourselves a chance. And you know, if we managed to take those two chances, I believe we would have gone on to win the game. Uh, you haven't been able to, to bat out the 50 overs in, in any of the three games. Is there anything you would put that down to? Or is, no, we just need to be better. Um, absolutely, we just um, haven't um, played our best by a long stretch, um, going back to the T20s as well. So um, I think individually and collectively, just to um, you know, reflect and reflect quickly because there's, there's not much time, but to just you know what things we need to get back to, what we do really well as a, a team. We've not played a lot of ODI cricket in um, the recent past and maybe just working out the rhythm of the game again and... Um, you know, but we just we just haven't played our best, and, and actually not playing our best at Lords and today we still get up to a score that um, gives us a chance. Have you been surprised at all by the the, the white ball it seems to have moved more often at any time in the last few years, probably more than more so than the red ball this month? Yeah, certainly. Um, there's probably been more swing in the the games than I can I can remember. Um, you know, we usually go to. You know, the oval is somewhere that's traditionally a, an excellent batting wicket and, and they, that was a tough uh, conditions or whether that was the, the overheads or the wicket and, and the ball moved around and you know, going back to the T20s as well. So, um, no, I think it, is, yeah, it has probably moved more than more than I've seen in the recent past. Is that down the balls? Or is it... No idea. Are, are you happy with that? I mean, I suppose it gives you the, the chance to test yourself against something different, but... Yeah, I think, you know, over the last few years we've played on a lot of great batting wickets in, in England and, and the balls haven't moved much. So uh, if you ask the bowlers, I'm sure they're, they're uh, happy with that. And, and you want to see the, the challenge. And I think, you know, over a period of time, um, you know, you need to be able to adapt to all different conditions. And, and that's what, you know, our ambition is to be the best team in the world. That's what you've got to be able to do and adapt quickly to what's in front of you. And just a word on the bowlers as well. Um, you've obviously got several bowlers sidelined there, Chris, Joffre, and Mark, who scores on. But, you know, like you said, they've done really well. Reese has really um, made a case for himself in these last few games. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's there's lots of guys missing out, and of course that creates opportunities for others. And, and guys have stepped up really well. You know, Reese Topley's been incredibly impressive, hasn't he? You know, to um, you know, six wickets at Lords, three in the power play again today. He's uh, he's got some great attributes, and you know, really really pleased with with um, his performances, especially. Go ahead, please, and then uh, <coughs> Josh Vimalkumar this side. Uh, is Rishabh Pant the most audacious stroke player of this generation? Very, almost impossible to plan even something as a, as a captain. Well, judging by the Boomer question a while uh, over, I think you know you can make your own assumption again. But uh, Rishabh is a, a fantastic player, and again, if you give him a second chance, he'll, he'll generally hurt you. But uh, what sets him apart from the other stroke players? I think um, there's. There's numerous great stroke players around around the world. Um, Rishabh is a very fearless player. Um, he's someone who um, you know is, is great to watch. He's, he's brilliant for the game in, in all formats. You know he's a, an exciting player to watch, and it's probably his mentality that seems to set him apart. He obviously has um, fantastic talent, um, but he's uh, you know, someone who looks like a really fearless cricketer, and um, you know looks like he gets you know, great backing to go and play however he wants to play. Mel, and we'll do Julie and um, George. Yeah, Mike. Just to, to to pick up on what you said about uh, about the adapting, is that do you think one of the biggest issues that the fact that the batting wicket have been so good here, um, that perhaps some of some of the players aren't so good at, at adapting? Is that a modern sort of white ball thing? Is it an England thing because of the pitches we play on <coughs> at home, or or is it? Uh, the actual approach isn't working. No, I'd say we, you, know, you haven't quite just played at our best as well. You know, you're talking about uh, some of the best players we've ever had in, in English cricket and some of the best players in the world, and um, they just haven't got in. You know, someone, uh, you know, I won't say names, but you know, there's some brilliant players there who have incredible experience, and um, you know, they're usually fantastic at playing what's in front of them, but we just haven't, we haven't really got in and had long partnerships and um, you know, I think you saw today anytime you did get a partnership 
going, he's then started to be able to score and score freely. And um, I think that's been the, the thing. We haven't just got in as well as we would usually. Um, and you know, we've played in all sorts of different conditions over a long period of time. Um, for us as a team, the sort of slow wickets are generally the bigger challenge for, for the style of cricket we would like to play. Um, but I do believe we can, at our best, impose ourselves still on those types of wickets, um, which actually allows us to get bigger scores than maybe we used to on those kind of wickets as well. We just you just have to play better. It's as simple as that. And just um, and just quickly also, they, they had a clear plan to when they had Jadeja in the deep on the, the leg side and they were bowling short. Did, did you, were you just backing yourself to... to no, it's just, that's just poor batting. Julian? Yeah, I've just, just following up on that really. So you, you, you're not particularly averse to sort of the team knocking it around for ones and twos if that's what the situation requires? No, not at all. I, like, um, that we want to play a really positive and aggressive brand of cricket. And, you know, sometimes I think more for you guys, the, you see that as you just have to hit fours and sixes. And it doesn't mean that at all. Um, you know, so if it's, it's playing the situation in front of you and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. So if what's possible is only ones and twos, it's making sure you get ones and twos as opposed to dot balls. Um, so that's more about it's trying to push the boundaries of, of what's capable on on a wicket on the day. Thank you. George, then Mike, uh, finish with that one. How are you uh, finding the demands of captaincy? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm learning lots about it. I think I've certainly found the first week of captaincy busy, but I um, certainly feel a lot more comfortable now, I think, in... Um, you know, there's been lots of games, very short space of time, which um, I think has been a, a challenge as well. Just to sometimes, you know, it'd be nice to have a, a day where you can just sort of reflect a bit and uh, not always be thinking. You know, so that's felt busier than I think it would normally. Um, and I feel like a really experienced cricketer, um, but uh, in terms of a, a captain, quite a young captain, and with lots of. Um, you know, opportunity to grow and to learn about the role, um, and I think it will take a bit of time. Um, you know, I think, you know, I don't want to sort of uh, try and run before I can walk. I just got to, you know, try and work it out, be myself, um, and use the people around me to, to help me. There's some such experienced guys in, in the dressing room, and and um, and all the coaching staff have been been really helpful for me, and uh, can certainly lean on those guys to to assist me. Josh, you mentioned the schedule is busy. Uh, some of us might say it's ridiculous, but is that one of the reasons why Reece didn't bowl his full <coughs> today? Because you've got to just try and manage his workload a bit? Yeah, um, no, I think, absolutely. I think we, we have to look after the players. I think the schedules are, are incredibly tough. Um, you know, the thought of a three and a half hour bus journey tomorrow to then play another 50 over game on, on Tuesday is is probably, um, you know, there's risks there, especially for the bowlers. So we'll have to, to manage those guys and uh, maybe look to rest a few guys. Um, and again, that creates opportunities for others as well, which is, is great. There's um, you know, lots more guys sat on the sidelines who are uh, wanting to, um, you know, have that opportunity. Um, Matthew Potts comes into the squad for for the South Africa series, he's obviously been doing brilliantly well in, in the Test series. So there's another guy who's, who's um, you know, exciting um, to see in, in ODI cricket if he gets his chance. Um, but yeah, certainly for someone like Reese, who's um, you know he's been through a lot with his his body and his career, and, and I think he has a great understanding of of what he needs. So it'll probably be a, a good conversation with him to especially and all the bowlers to sort of see how they're travelling because. Don't want to get to a point where we, we push guys too far. Last one, Adam. Josh, just on a more personal note, you've obviously been about two weeks doing this month of loads of white ball cricket, first month as captain. How do you sum up that in terms of your batting and your captaincy? I mean, how do you feel about your game? Yeah, I feel really good about my game. I think I've been um, in some, you know, some of the best form of my life, and um, you don't lose that overnight. So I still feel um, in great touch. You know. Form isn't just about the results you get in, in terms of the score. Um, you know, sometimes you score runs and you don't feel great at all. So um, I feel very good about my own game, um, and I'm just sort of, you know, like I said to the question before, just learning the the art of, of captaincy. How um, 
you know what it um, looks like to me, and, and I, you know that's my style and how I um, sort of manage it is going to develop over time with experience, and um, you know, it's set, felt exactly the same thing as a player. You can't buy experience, and, and again, I'm the same with the, the captaincy. I have to use those experiences over time. Of course, you want to accelerate that learning. Um, as quickly as you can, um, but sometimes you, you do just need a bit of time. And there's been a bit of change, obviously, for the for the group. We have a new coach here, um, as well, so yeah, it's a, just sort of letting that bed in as, as quickly as possible. But it might take a bit of time. Would you say that over the next few weeks, that finding your own style is one of the key focuses for yourself? Yeah, well, just being myself is going to be my style, but just sort of um, more about managing my own time. Um, you know, I think around. Um, you know, for like the morning of a game, you know, I've obviously been a player for a long time. I was very clear as to what my morning looks like in, in terms of how I'd always prepare. So again, it's just finding that um, rhythm of, of what it looks like on the morning of a game, what it looks like at training, um, and uh, yeah. So I think, you know, and I'll, I'll work that out for myself.